Uh, thank you for including me. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I'll come back to that. And uh, so, actually, full disclosure before I start. Uh, First of all, I have many challenges, obviously, following the, the, the act, you know, the previous acts and get you out of here for your picture and lunch and, and all that and uh, explain what I'm trying to do here. But be that as it may, uh, what uh, full disclosure here, actually, uh, I'm very interested, of course, in learning and understanding. I've, I've been uh, actually inspired in this whole deep learning business because I didn't understand it for a long time until, of course, the scattering transform. And then I invited Joan actually to NC State and uh, we talked about it. I talked about it also with Stefan for many years. So uh, thank you. And uh, but actually this work is particularly actually a, a response to a sustained, uh, I should say, uh, um, a sustained crit critique and, in fact, complaints by government uh, colleagues that basically that were complaining that uh, deep learning was not living up to what it was all was cracked up to be with their data. You know, it can it can recognize cats, it can recognize dogs and things, but taking them to you know taking the, those machines to their labs was a far cry from. Uh, so I don't know why they maybe they were comfortable in, in talking to me, and but why uh, you know I wasn't a sp spokesman for this area, but be that, be that as it may, so that sort of inspired and and, and I started looking a little bit in, into this. Now back to the the topic, I met Stefan actually. Uh, I was a graduate student, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it was '89. You gave a talk at Tufts University. Right. Uh, of course, being native French speaker and things, we connected immediately. But there was more to it, actually. And uh, his fame preceded him. And so I went to do that talk and uh, hoping actually to make a connection with I had just taken a course in Volterra filters and uh, trying long story short, make a long story short, never made it. But it was, it, it was great, of course, to have met uh, Stefan. It was actually, uh, it's been a friendship for over 30 years. And uh, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for being a great colleague. And uh, we're here to celebrate, of course, your 60 uh, years, but uh, we're also here to celebrate actually decades of a very productive and a very creative work and uh, I wish you, with all my heart, I wish you uh, another, at least another 60 years of prolific, uh, of a pro prolific work and creative work. And uh, this is actually to sort of uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, follow up and, and, and uh, confirm uh, some of the uh, statements made earlier. I see Stefan as basically uh, a, a catalyst and, and, and uh, remarkable uh, pilot taking us from uh, wave lights to floodlights. And I will leave you with that. That's basically a happy birthday, Stefan. And uh, so now actually let's get to the, 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 the uh, what I want to talk about today. So I, I will motivate if this needs any motivation, this whole work and the learning and things. And I'll give you my vision. And uh, I'll, I'll give it what, what I will start with is uh, this uh, pr different perspective on convolution, nonlinear modeling, and learning. And I will take you actually to early 1900s compared to what's, uh, you know, what's being done today. And, uh, and I, I'll, I'll propose a variation on a CNN theme with some properties, and I will show some experiments as well. Just to give you a, a peak preview, this is basically what, uh, in fact, this was done uh, in response to some uh, of the reviewers on, a, on the paper, on a kinetic, because everything has to be done on the latest data, okay? This kinetics 400 was just put out, by, I don't know when, by Google, and uh, what's, what's shown here, oops, Okay. Oh, 
Thank you, Mickey. Man of many talents. <laughs> so uh, this is actually video data for classifying activities. And uh, these are supposed to be uh, the state-of-the-art uh, techniques uh, uh, today. And uh, just to give you, uh, uh, you know, again, a synopsis of this, the, these are the, the complexity of the, you know, uh, of the machines that, uh, that achieved this type of, of, of performance. And uh, these GMAX, are, these are like uh, complexity, multiply, add, and all this stuff. And, uh, and uh, what uh, we show down here is what we're proposing, Volterra neural networks, okay? So it's, it, it's actually quite, uh, quite, uh, quite interesting. And uh, so I'm not going to dwell too much on this uh, in, in, in the sense where th this kind of justifies itself. But uh, I'm, I'm to, just to come back to the, those unmet expectations, so the, the, uh, a lot of this, again, w uh, happened uh, due to these uh, complaints and, and, and critiques from uh, the uh, government uh, people. And, uh, and uh, it took a long time, actually, because they never said anything why or how or anything. But I, I, in the end, I, I found out basically it is indeed due to limited access to data in the challenging environments that they had. And uh, for people who work in this area, they, they call it low effective model complexity. Uh, in other words, you have a machine that, that has uh, an extremely high expressive complexity, but you basically don't feed it enough, right? And, and uh, so it, it doesn't work so well. So to address this uh, uh, inefficiency, so we, uh, we decided maybe we should revisit the, this whole concept of convolution and explore the, its many fa facets. Of course, uh, you know, by training, I'm an electrical engineer. And uh, uh, so we look at it from a system theoretic uh, uh, point of view. And it, in fact, uh, it entailed looking at, uh, given the zero memory nonlinearity that you typically apply in, in a deep learning uh, framework, uh, we, look at, we look at it from Wieser Strauss uh, uh, approximation uh, theorem, you know, polynomial the uh, approximation theorem. And uh, for those of you, of course, uh, we've been talking about uh, chat uh, GPT, but well, we're burning to uh, maybe to ask me this question. Uh, had, you know, would I have been able to, to get an answer for all these uh, mysteries? This is what I got from chat G GPT. So obviously I did wrong because I should have looked at ethical and social consideration in, in, in the way we should be doing learning these days. So, but uh, that's okay. We just move on. Okay, so what I discovered, again, in, the, in this process, took me back to early 1900s, and it turned out that Frisch spent a good deal of his time trying to generalize this Wieser-Strauss approximation theorem. Okay, and uh, it, it turns out that it's right around that time that uh, basically a lot of work was being done to A, Go, you know, basically starting with a linear functional to try to formalize a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, functionals. And, and uh, Frischia was uh, the, uh, one of the main uh, actors, but there was a Hedemar and, uh, uh, and all. But uh, he introduced particularly this concept of homogeneous functional of degree n. And this is basically how you look at it. And you can see the, the, the polynomial behavior that's introduced here. But it, of course, it's all in infinite dimensional uh, space. And then you have the, these uh, coefficients, in some sense, that are also uh, within that, uh, uh, you know, that infinite dimension. For some kernel of the uh, k, you have that, uh, that uh, uh, definition of what a homogeneous functional of degree n was. Of course, uh, from a system theoretic point of view, you can basically, you can actually uh, define a system input-output response by, by, by uh, this thing where you can denote whatever, identity, uh, polynomial, uh, differentiation, whatever, okay? So, uh, the, uh, given, of course, uh, the, all the properties of a Wieser-Strauss uh, uh, approximation theorem, 
So Frechier, of course, sought the notion of, and he, you know, he developed this, uh, this idea also, the notion of polynomial functional. What is a polynomial functional? So basically, he says that the uh, any, I'm skipping all the technical details here, we don't have time for this, but basically any uh, continuous uh, fun functional f here can be defined as a limit of this series, infinite series in general, of, of, of all these homogeneous functionals of different degrees, okay? And uh, so at least there's a lot, there was a lot of activity as you can imagine, I had to go back actually to a lot of this literature. Uh, uh, you know, this is 1909 by the way, it was, it was published. And there was a lot of activity around that time, but at least cross-referencing and there were the very technical uh, nuances and things among the different contributions. So I can't speak uh, with authority, with uh, you know, the, the crediting everybody, but at least there were a lot of cross-references that basically credit this uh, to, to uh, Frechet. And in fact, it was also confirmed by, oops, Ah, going the wrong way. It was confirmed actually by Volterra himself in, in his book that he published in 1959, where he basically gave, gave this, this expression uh, of a Volterra series. Of course, this, uh, you, you can, uh, this is for what they, what they call also a continuous stationary system. And, and uh, Volterra, of course, uh, who's a, a tremendous, actually, besides being a tremendous researcher, is uh, quite a character as well. But uh, the, the, uh, the idea here, you, you can see, and the uh, attractive, uh, uh, the appeal of, the, of this uh, thing, it, it sort of reminds you a little bit of a convolution, but in a nonlinear fashion, right? And, and uh, you cannot basically actually uh, uh, you know, reproduce and, and retrieve everything that uh, we know about just linear, you know, linear convolution. So that's, uh, in some sense, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, sets, uh, sets us up for a very, so what I would call a very natural uh, setting, where in addition, of course, to we know that it's uniformly, you know, it has, it enjoys properties of uniform convergence and things, but you can actually rewrite it in such a way that it kind of, you know, it's reminiscent of at least of what we're doing today in, in, uh, in uh, lay, this layering business of, of uh, deep learning. Okay, so of course, what's uh, some of the, uh, the important actually, and uh, the important properties here, you can see that a lot of these nonlinear terms, uh, have, of course, they, they, they carry a lot of memory. These cross terms carry a lot of memory. But not, uh, not only that, they're independently weighted. So you don't have the, 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 the problem that you're dealing with uh, the, zero, the zero memory uh, map where you, you have a lot of uh, cross terms that are sort of combined and you can't necessarily uh, entangle them, okay? And uh, of course, uh, as I said, it, it, it's also it also lends itself to efficient uh, computational uh, gain. So in, uh, uh, in a discrete uh, version, this is how it would look. So you have this, uh, this uh, F, which is now uh, some sort of a filter that you, you, uh, you approximate in some sense uh, this uh, expression by some order by, by uh, a ta uh, not a Taylor, but uh, a Volterra series of some order, let's say for instance, K, okay? And uh, this is basically what, uh, what we use here. And in fact, what we use is, uh, uh, is one of, uh, of uh, that's not the right. Okay, well we use is actually a, a, a Volterra filter of uh, second order, but th th this kind of shows the, all of the implementation uh, advantages also, you, you know, you can flexibly uh, scale it, you can, uh, uh, and, and uh, what we do here is of course, we're not gonna use an infinite uh, uh, series, we're gonna use a very finite series, in fact, we're gonna use a second order series, and uh, we're gonna uh, compose 
these series, just like we do in, uh, in deep learning. Okay? So that's basically what we, we have here. So we're going to choose a second order filter, and we're going to compose the second order filters. And you can, of course, you can invoke uh, some uh, other uh, mathematical properties of a composition operator and, and uh, you, uh, to show that this is actually dense and all that. And this is so in the end, each filter is going to be of this kind. You know, your layer, each, your, uh, each of your uh, uh, deep learning la uh, layers is going to be of this kind now. In fact, uh, the problem that we were looking at in particular was actually a spatial temporal problem with looking at video uh, sequences. So the, uh, the f I'm not a very good user of this thing. Uh, the the uh, form of the filter is a little bit more complex, but actually still, you know, tractable. You have basically spatial, uh, uh, spatial variables as well as temporal uh, variables. Okay, so coming back now to this, uh, uh, to this uh, idea of independently uh, learnable nonlinear parameters uh, through backpropagation. This is very important. Uh, uh, this is a very important uh, property. You have stability property, and you can actually. Uh, it turns out that this is also, uh, uh, in, a, in a very natural way, you re-express uh, the, these filters to sort of uh, synthesize like LSTM and all these other uh, deep learning uh, structures. So this is what we would have, except for one thing. All of a sudden, we have basically a complexity explosion. Okay. So, in other words, if I have, for instance, z of the second-order filters, then you know, all of a sudden, this is the, the kind of uh, a problem that I, I'll be dealing. The, the p is the the size of your spatial. P one is the size of one uh, dimension of your spatial filter. P two is the other dimension, and l is the temporal dimension of the filter. And uh, so it turns out that one way to, to, uh, uh, to work around that is we take that, that uh, you know, these matrices we, uh, that are of significant, of course, significant uh, size. What we do is we factorize them. There are some conditions for them to be factorizable. And we learn those parameters, again, as we had, you know, had planned the whole time before. How am I doing in time? Seven? seven. seven? Okay. All right. That's fine. I'm even good. More, more, yeah, I'm good. So the, uh, the idea here, the, uh, at least the experimental uh, setup here, is we have these video sequences that we're putting through these uh, filters. And we're learning, you know, we're learning appropriately. I'm not going to go into the details of all this learning <coughs> business. So, uh, and there are out there, there are a lot of databases, and uh, they're all very large, and uh, they're very complex. And uh, these are the at least a sample of the activities that you're, you know, that one is supposed to uh, to be classifying. You know, make up. Uh, you know, applying makeup, baby crawling, surfing, what have you, you can imagine they, that they have it in there, okay? This is just an, an example of how uh, some of these, uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, layers actually exhibit all these features. For instance, in this case, it, it's, uh, it's uh, catching this bow and arrow uh, in, in some of the, in these intermediate uh, uh, stages. And uh, so that was, so we, we did actually two, 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 two we analyze these uh, the data in two ways. One of them is just basically we just analyze the data itself, the spatial temporal data. And another way is, uh, and this was, this was sort of a standard, at least in this, in this area, another way is to actually add a, the optical flow as an additional source of information. So, and they call it the two stream. Uh, flow and uh, it's shown here as well. Okay, so uh, 
So that we, uh, we actually show here the, the results in, uh, uh, in, in two batches. Uh, one where you pre-train, in other words, you use before you, 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 uh, you actually carry out uh, the, this, uh, uh, this training and, and uh, testing. You actually pre-train your, your, your uh, uh, networks and then you train them with your, uh, your data. And you can see that indeed that we have a marginal, but nevertheless, you know, uh, still uh, uh, improvement. But the, so that's competitive, but that's not the, actually the issue here. And I will show you in the next slide. The issue here is actually the degree of complexity because we're, what we're doing here, in other words, what we're achieving at this rate is at a, at a fractional cost in terms of complexity of what these, uh, these other uh, methodologies uh, have done. And, and the same thing here, with, and this, this is with no training. And once again, you know, we, we're actually, we can, we can show improvement. And this is actually the key, uh, the key part here. And uh, so these are sort of the, uh, the classical way, if you will. Uh, so the, they, they train, uh, almost 23 million parameters. And for this one, it's like 25 million parameters. And these are the, the kind of, uh, you know, the kind of uh, parameters, the number of parameters that we actually need. No, no activation function, no, it basically just using, you know, very uh, simply Volterra filters. Appropriately, of course, appropriately computed and appropriately adjusted, okay? And uh, these are, like I said, these are a, a more recent, uh, more recent uh, uh, examples and uh, demanded by, by the, some of the reviewers. And uh, to quote, I think, uh, David Donahoe yesterday uh, in his uh, talk, I mean, I agree to more, you know, broadly with what he says, but I, I think there are actually reasons for that. So these are basically the newest data. So you have to adapt to the newest data there is. And this is the newest data there is, okay? And uh, they made this uh, basically comply to this. And this is what I, I actually showed you earlier in the sense where indeed, these are actually, in, in fairness, these are more complex. This is data put out by, uh, by Google. These are more complex in terms of, of you know, the, the complexity of the activities and, and uh, 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 to, to, to capture, to model and things. But nevertheless, it's, it, it's still, you know, just other data. Uh, again, you can see the, uh, both in terms of com uh, computational complexity as well as uh, accuracy. So just to conclude here, so this is, uh, uh, I think we've shown that uh, this is a viable perspective to, uh, for nonlinear modeling in uh, convolutional neural networks. Uh, it uh, provides uh, adjustable complexity uh, while actually, uh, uh, you know, providing a substantial gain in, in, in also in the uh, or improving rather, a uh, substantial uh, improvement in the effective uh, uh, model complexity. And uh, now uh, actually the, this, uh, there is also this issue about uh, the qth order rank approximation for the quadratic filter. Actually since then, we, we at least in my mind, we haven't shown it yet. There are still some proofs that, that, that beg, uh, you know, that beg <laughs> development. But uh, uh, th there are other ways, actually, of, of uh, you know, uh, sort of circumventing this uh, complexity. And uh, this also has been used in different contexts for static images, of course, for multimodal fusion, uh, and so on and so forth. So with that, I'll stop here, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. For me, uh, since it's a it's a different architecture than usual neural nets, so implementation is is an issue here. So uh, the big thing about neural nets is that they're matched to what GPUs can do. 
And have you thought about the implementation there and what speed comparisons there might be for uh, either training or inference? We, we have implemented these on GPUs. Is, is that what you were I'm sorry, I didn't yeah, catch. I just want to understand, you know, the, it, it comparative, like on the number of parameters. Yes. Um, because the implementation, <laughs> it, it seems like it, it's more the throughput at the GPU head rather than the actual count of parameters. I wonder if you've thought about that. No, the the uh, the number of parameters that I'm quoting here are literally the parameters of your filter. These are your filters. Your filters have a certain size, as uh, we uh, we indicated, p1, p2 in, in the spatial domain, and l in the temporal domain. Those are the number of of the parameters that you have there. Those are the parameters that I'm talking about. The, I mean, the, the GPU is. I, I guess what what my point is is people are going to these massive models with gigantic number of parameters, uh -huh. but they're somehow matched to the GPU architecture such that the, the cost of going to those extra parameters is less than you might think. So I'm just wondering how your architecture matches up to the GPUs that are there. Well, uh, I mean, uh, I, I guess I don't know what, what, what you, uh, since what I showed early on, the first, uh, this, this actually uh, reflects the computational complexity in, uh, that, that uh, you know, each one of these uh, techniques has, right? Uh, GMAC is a giga multiply add something or other. The, these are all the, uh, what, what, what is used by computer scientists as, uh, as a measure of, of uh, efficiency, right? For the model to compute. The, these are, you know, real. This is given. This is given to you by by the. I, I hadn't seen that. Yeah, this is given. This is given to you by by the computer itself. You know, when you run your your, your data, this is given to you by, uh, in this case, PyTorch. So, so let me just follow up question. Is yeah. In the case, uh, just uh, first order case, it seems very similar to transformers, basically, so nonlinear computers. So to me, it looks like what you are doing, like higher order transformers. Which is it like higher order tensor? I mean, is it something that's well? I mean, uh, the the way I understand, right? I actually just taught a course in advanced topics in machine learning, and I, I had to teach about these transformers. The way, at least, I interpret the transformers, it's it's basically it, it, it's 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 the first time in your son. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything uh, that, that that has these, you know, multi-head attention. No, the attention uh, yeah. is just to look at pairs of the kernel k of x y. If you just use like basically two inputs, it's basically an attention. But here you have more kernel with more more x i, and I think it's a question of Dave is how do you map this to GPU? And I think it's related to the factorization that you want to do, and at some point you need to factor your console. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's, some, that's something that uh, you're doing that's in non that Well, people don't do. I guess I, I'm not sure I understand your question. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay so there's no question. Uh, we thank, uh,